that um, that had a big long tail. Okay, I'll zoom in on this so you can see see my drawing. It's quality stuff, man. Okay. 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 What? There's an animal. This thing was called a zoid. Okay. Rum the cut. <laughs> A what? It needs a fedora. A fedora. Uh. Okay, so this is a zoid. I actually, actually, what, what, um, I probably need to make it a little bit more vicious because it looked like it was kind of smiling at the time. Okay, zoids actually through the whole like um, up till up till I think the third or fourth century, um, um, zoids were were fairly populous. Okay, zoids were were really they they had a they were kind of brown and furry, um, but and some of them had shorter tails. Some had even longer tails. Okay, um, and you know their noses actually were different different lengths as well. But there was one thing that was always common about a about a zoid is it always had a really flat back. Okay. Um, so that was a zoid. You can just imagine these things running around. And actually, they were um, they were originally um, herbivores, but then what happened was um, was as the drought came in and the famine struck and all that good stuff, um, they uh, their normal vegetation that they ate started it was just withering away, and so they. Um, so they had to go ahead, you know, they usually lived, let's say like, here, here's a town, okay? They would usually like live outside the town, you know, in the woods and stuff like that, where, you know, what they usually ate started to wither and, and dry up. Then they had to go ahead and try and find new sources of food and they would come into town and this, that, and the other. Well, actually, um, um, their food sources, be, you know, they started to eat like um, people's, um, like goats and sheep and this, that, and the other. And what? And they actually averaged about about a foot to 14 inches, um, about high, you know. And the length was really quite variable because their their tails could be different lengths. Yes, sir. I thought the famine was in like the early 20th century. This is this is the Scottish famine. No, earliest 20th century. No. No, this is not the potato famine. This is the I, this is a different kind of famine. Okay. Um, so anyway, so then you know the the farmers are starting to get mad and everything, and and it was really kind of interesting the political dynamics of the time because the farmers are mad, but the people that didn't didn't make their li their living off livestock were like, what's the big deal? So you lose a goat here or there, big deal. You at least got something to eat, you know, um, all this good stuff. Well, then what happened was the city folk. There was one time where this little kid was walking to school and it was killed by a pack of zoids. Okay? They're actually pretty quick. They had these little short stubby legs, but I mean they were fast. Okay? But and and the, and the thing is they were they were pack hunters. Okay? So, you know, um they would they would like form, it was really kind of interesting. They'd have a, I'll put zo Z for zoids. Um, you know, like say if there was some here um, and somebody's walking this way, the other zoids would like hang out here to try and flush them towards their buddies, okay? So anyway, so now after, you got a picture. Farmers are mad because they're eating their goats and sheeps and pigs and, and, um, and all the Sheeps or sheep? <laughs> Sheeps? Shipe? Shipes. Okay, they're eating their shipe. Okay. Um, and then now the townspeople are mad because they're afraid to send their kids to school. Okay. So they're like, um, so, and, and these things are just running all over the place. They're crazy. Okay. Um, so 
That's where the word trapezoid came from because they had to do something about it. And now, who does live trapping in here? You do? Okay. I'm going to draw a live trap, and you tell me if I'm wrong. Oh, sorry. And then it's got this angled portion in here, right? Okay. You wonder why that is? Because traps went all the way, the, or the origin of live traps actually came from the trapping of zoids. So what they had was a national proclamation of help your town, trapezoid. Save the life of our children by trapping a zoid. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they were edible. So then it helped solve the famine contest, or not contest, um, <laughs> the, the famine issue, okay? And then there was actually a real famous zoid that was rare. It was all white. And the one thing about the all white zoid is its tail was always the same length as its nose, okay? Can you picture that? Okay. So then what would happen was it was such a rare sighting that if somebody saw one of these, they would say, I saw one of those zoids. So that's where the, that's where the term isosceles trapezoid came from. Okay. Where when the tail and the nose are the same length. Yes, sir. See, that's one of those things that, um, that, okay, Keaton, Keenan, are you in a history book? No. So does that mean you didn't exist, that you don't exist? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay, well, I disagree. Okay, this is just one of those little lost things in history that, um, that just, you know, because you can picture that. You know, you get a zoid in here, and it fit just perfect, okay, okay, okay. So, um, so that's that's the um, the true story of the zoids. So, are they still around? No, they're not. They were actually this the um, the trapezoid movement was so successful that they um, totally exterminated the, um, the zoid population. I think Dixon was talking about that. <laughs> you know what? Dixon would know. They've caught them before. Oh, that's interesting, because I thought they were all extinct. Well, they are now. They're, 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 they're actually a marsupial. They're closely related to the possum family. Yeah. Could I tame one? Yeah. They don't exist anymore, Keenan. You should listen. Well, when, when they were alive, could you tame one? I don't. The, I don't know if people had pet zoids. I suppose you could because people have like pet raccoons and stuff. You know. So, any other dumb questions, Keenan? Okay, good. I'm sure you will. Ooh, that's true. Okay. Maybe they could find one of the massive Zoid burial pits. You know, because they, they would actually have celebrations. Um, where did the Zoids, like, originate? Where did they... It was, like, in the Scotland area? Yeah, I think so. It's a Scottish Zoid. So... So, anyway... Here we go, kites. Let's do our definition of a kite and properties of a kite. Nine minutes and 25 seconds, okay. Hmm. Okay, kite. It's quadrilateral. With two sets of what is it, what's the term we we use to say it's two things are next to each other adjacent two sets of adjacent 
sides equal. That's my definition. That is a kite. Okay. And the story of a kite's kind of an interesting one, but we just don't have time for it today. And it's a little bit racist, but... Um, <laughs> so, so let's start off with just a definition, or just a, a basic picture here. Okay. So, the diagonals of a kite do lots of different things. Okay? Properties. The diagonals are perpendicular. Diagonals are perpendicular. Okay. Um, okay. The um, one diagonal bisects the other diagonal. and the angles of the kite. And this is one that honestly, if I were trying to remember the properties, I would probably just draw a picture. Because you guys on your quiz the other day, you showed me that you, that, uh, you, know, you can just tell by the picture what properties it has. So what we've got is that's been bisected and this angle here has been bisected. Okay. And it has one set of opposite sides equal. One set of opposite sides, or opposite, no, opposite angles. I'm sorry. And what's interesting is most of those things you guys gave me on the bonus of the last quiz. You guys are like, yeah, opposite angles are equal. And somebody even put the diagonals are uh, congruent. Okay. Um, and I think. That is it. Let me just double check. I'm going to talk about that real quick too. Okay. Um, and then we're going to wrap up this chapter. Okay. Okay. Okay, so, so that's kite. If we were going to go over to this, um, to this family tree we had the other day, where would kite belong? Under quadra, okay. And here's, um, let me, the, now we have a little bit of an issue that kind of concerns me. Is this a parallelogram? It's not a parallelogram. So it would not go underneath this. It would come over here. But could a kite be a rhombus? Could a kite be a rhombus? Yeah. I don't know. Let's take a I want to read the way they've defined it. Because I would think maybe, yeah, but a kite is a quadrilateral with exactly two sets of 
no, of congruent uh, consecutive congruent sides. Unlike a parallelogram, the opposite sides are not congruent and not parallel. Okay, so let's just go, let's add one more thing. Opposite sides are not congruent. So that makes it so it can't be a rhombus. No rhombus for you. No rhombus for you. Okay. So if I was looking at this, I'd have kite. Where would trapezoid go? Under kite? Oh, okay. So let's come over here. Let's say I've got trapezoid. And then underneath trapezoid would be what? Isosceles trapezoid. Okay, I don't, I'm kind of running out of room here. But we'll review just real quick the properties of an isosceles trapezoid. Okay. Legs are equal. Base angles are equal. And the diagonals are equal. Okay. Legs are equal. Base angles are equal. And the diagonals are equal. That's a trapezoid. Isosceles trapezoid. They're more rare. They're definitely more rare. I saw that. Okay. So if I wanted to show something was a kite using a, um, a distance or slope or whatever, slope would do me no good. Slope would do me no good. I'd have to show that I'd have two, two sets of congruent sides that are adjacent or consecutive or next to each other. Okay. Um, Yeah, and then we'll go from there. Okay, I'll have to see if I can find some more information about um, about zoids, because obviously you guys don't believe it. I wish I still had my textbook from college. Oh, well, is what it is. Okay, so here we go. Let's do this. So I'm going to give you guys the rest of the time to work. Page Too. I knew I was forgetting something. Okay, one thing about a, um, a trapezoid that's very important that I left out. This is a base, this is a base. What are the other sides called? Legs, Legs. okay. If I go from the midpoint of a leg to the midpoint of the other leg, 
I get this brand new segment. And it's actually, I've seen it called two different things. A mid-segment or a median. Okay? And the length of that is the average of my two bases. So let's just write a note. My mid-segment is equal to base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2. Okay? So if I would do an example here real quick, 10, 22, 22, what's my mid-segment going to be? 16. The average of 10 and 22 is 16. 10 plus 22 equals 32 divided by 2 gives me 16. What if I did this though? <laughs> uh, Twelve, fifteen. What would X be? Ooh, how'd you get that so fast? Yeah, because it grows by three, grow by another three, and I'm gonna get eighteen. Because that's got to be in the middle, so it's got to grow the same on each one. Now, if there was a more, more complicated expression, here's what you would do. X plus 12 over 2 equals 15. And we'll do that tomorrow. But you could write base plus base over 2 equals my mid-segment or my median. Median's a powerful thing, so, um, so that's another formula you can use. There we go. I'm almost time at the end of time for my recording, so I'm going to go ahead and stop there. Um, you, I do not have any uh, coordinate geometry stuff on there that you'll need a graph a graph paper with. Okay, got about. A little over 15 minutes.